review review and reflection thing that we do. Yes, highlight. <coughs> so by having the video, then I can look back on it and then share it with like other teachers and kind of look at what's going on in my class, just as a way to kind of do a reflection, like a self eval. GoPro, yeah. I, yeah, I should get a GoPro and wear it on my head. No, yeah, you see what you happens? Should, so that you you can you make, oh my god, Tom, you should make, you'd make the best <laughs> vlogs ever if you just vlog you teaching. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, like and you guys wouldn't even have to come to class, and that would just make it so much easier. You just stay home and sit in your jammies and watch no, it on like, your computer. Like, no, but no, you could vlog, like, you just look at the class. It's like, hey guys, back with another video, baby. <laughs> We'll work on that. All right, this so baby steps. This is the first step. Okay, um, so we're starting a new unit on chemistry. You guys, if you want, you not now, but you can empty out your notebooks of all your physics notes and everything. Not right now. Uh, I'm going to be giving you. I have a gift for you. Uh, these are going to be your chemistry science notebooks. Okay. They're, it's got graph paper. Or when we do graphing, but also can help graphing. you. We're going to do a lot of sketching graphing. and drawing. So raise your hand here if you feel like you are good at drawing. Anybody? Okay. Oh I'll get your hand up. Isabel, get your hand up. Now raise your hand if you think you're not very good at drawing. All right. Raise your hand if you if you think you're just a terrible drawing you drawer and you just can't do it at all. I can make. All right. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're gonna we're gonna work on this to where you feel like, oh yeah, I can do a sketch, okay. Because we're gonna focus a lot on doing notes that involve both written words and sketches and drawings. So, and this is really important. Draw a, stick, a stick figure. So now you might not feel like you can, but eventually you will. And because practice will make you need to help. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Let me finish. So practice will get you there. <laughs> so. That was Jason. Z. Why I'm you, sorry, Jason Z, just showed move, me the window with a mask. Move <laughs> over to where you can't see through that window. <laughs> move. Oh. Move, move. So you can't see. Yeah, I can't see. All right. So we're going to do a lot of practice of this. And in chemistry in particular, we're going to be studying a lot of stuff that you can't see. Like what's going on with atoms and molecules. So we're going to try and make the invisible more visible and the abstract a little more concrete. So by drawing, I think that's going to help us. Take that off. And also with note taking, it's going to expand how you do notes a little bit. All right. So I'm going to give you one of these. I also on the on the tables there should be some sharpies. If not, I'll bring some sharpies around. I want you to put your names on the front of these. I'm going to give you a label. Somewhere on the front of your front of your notebook, and get your name, first name, nice and clear, so that if it gets left behind, we know who to give it back to. All right. Now, last year with Jim, um, you guys used science notebooks. We're not going to be doing them exactly the same way. I'm not even sure exactly how Jim used them with you, but some of the things I would like to build on, and some of the things we're going to be doing a little bit differently. The one thing I want to emphasize is please give yourself lots of room. Um, and it's okay to skip pages. Um, I know with, with Jim, he had you write on one side for like data collection and all that, and the other side was more reflection. Stop and listen. Uh, so we're not going to be doing that exactly, but I would encourage you to leave lots of space. So if you draw a sketch or you take some notes or you collect some data, Leave the other side blank or leave half the page blank and just skip to the next page because there will be times when we go back to add more information. And it's really important that you have the room to do that, okay? And I may write some comments in there depending on how we decide to use these things. 
So give yourself lots of room. And when you draw something, make it big. Don't just draw little tiny things. Um, draw it big so that we can label it. Uh, there's colored pencils on the table so you can add color to it as well. So that we can really pack a lot of information in there. You've heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Can you start well, filming? Yeah, because then I'll just go back and kind of look at parts of it and then that'll help with my reflection. All right, so um, the idea of being a picture is worth a thousand words, but I really want there to be a combination of pictures and words. So really labeling your pictures is going to be super important. All right? So we have to bring a thousand words or eight. No, Holland. It's more, do you know the word synergistic? In which you, things combine together to create something more than just the parts. All right, so. That's not what says, sir. Chemistry. We're going to be focusing on chemistry. Can anybody give me sort of a quick definition of what you think chemistry might be? We, took, we already went over that. It feels sick. No. All right. He's good at chemistry. Shh. So, chemistry. I heard someone start to say something. Okay. The study of chemicals. The study of chemicals. Excellent. No. Anything else? <laughs> Periodic table of elements. Periodic table elements. Important part of chemistry, Lots of right? Numbers and Shh. Hang on. What? Numbers and pictures. Numbers, pictures. Abbreviation. Mixing, mixing. mixing things. Abbreviation. Oh, hang on. How anybody from this table contribute to what we're talking about? Chemistry. What is the study of chemistry? Uh, <laughs> it's, well, it's the study of chemicals. So, so the study of chemicals. Alchemy. That's the old. That's the old that's version old of chemistry. chemistry. That's where the word chemistry comes from. Alchemy. Which is uh, oh, it's an Arabic word. All right. So here's here's the definition. I want you to write this down in your notebook. Here's the other thing I want you to do is always put the date. Anytime you put anything in your notebook, always put a date on that page. So today, January third, right? Yeah. Twenty eighteen. Okay. Chemistry: the study of matter. and interactions between matter. Can we also put the day like Wednesday? If you want to. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. All right, so write this down, and then we're going to break it down. The study of matter and interactions between matter. So when y'all were saying the study of chemicals, Chemicals would be, you know, like a classification of metals. It's okay. I'm sorry, Tom. The rectangles. That's grammar. No, geometry. So when we were saying physics, a lot of that was energy, right? The energy of things. How energy is created, how energy is transferred, how energy is used, things like that. All right. Um, last year, last year when you guys were doing chemistry, you were looking at the periodic table, right? And you, you looked at different elements. You were looking at. Hello? I have to access the panel in this closet. Yeah. Thank you so much. The light usually comes in when you walk in. There you go. Thank you. Um, you did something with those dinosaurs. Right? Oh, yeah. I still have mine. All right. So, when you were doing the dinosaur study, what is it that you were measuring? We were measuring a rate of Wait, wait, just one at a time. Isabel started. We were like measuring the length and the width and the area and the weight. So you measured the length, the width, the height, which gives you what? What is that a measurement of? Once the you area. get those three things, the area, the volume. Right. We were we, measuring qualitative things and quantitative things. And right, so this was quantitative. And you the rate of growth. growth. So you measured its weight, also known as mass, right? You measured its volume. It's mass dimension. And then, so that's good because that's what matter is. So if it's the study of matter and interactions between matter, matter is anything 
that has mass and volume. So write this down too. Anything that has mass and volume. Isn't that right there? Just about. Well, except for let's here, let's get this written down and then we'll break it down a little bit. Yeah, it's it's like stuff. Except for magic tests. <laughs> except for magic tests. Yeah, that doesn't And if anybody feels like their handwriting is it's difficult, it takes you a long time to write. Uh, or it's just really hard to read once you're done. If you want, we can get a Chromebook and yeah. you can type your notes and oh then print them like and then genius. print them out and then glue them in there because everything ultimately needs to go into your notebook. All right. So mass and volume. When you measure the length, the width, and the height, you, that's the measurement of volume. When you dropped your dinosaur into the graduated cylinder of water and then you saw how much the water level went up. You weren't here for that. Um, you could measure the displacement of water, and that gives you the volume as well. Mass, you set it on a scale. You see how many grams it weighs, how many pounds it weighs. Uh, volume can be measured as liters, cubic feet, cups. So if you can have a cup of flour, you can have a cubic foot of sand. You could have, in terms of mass, you could have 100 pounds of chickens. You could have a ton of air, right? But you couldn't have like a gallon of light, or you couldn't have five pounds of, of electricity, right? So those forms of energy. You couldn't have two cubic feet of sound, right? So those are, those are forms of energy, so those are not matter. So it has to have mass and it has to have volume. And, it, and when you did your dinosaur study, there was a formula. It was mass divided by volume equals what? This is what y'all were graphing with your dinosaurs, I believe. Um. It's a formula. Mass divided by volume. How much mass is there in a given amount of space? So if you had one cubic centimeter and it weighs two grams, that is a measurement of? Mm. You guys remember this? Anybody? Nobody? Wild guesses? Wait, what's the question? Volume. If you have mass divided by volume, it equals what? Oh, uh, mass divided by the volume is... Uh, if you, if wait, it's so a density. Density, exactly. So that's what you guys were studying with your, your grow dinosaurs or whatever. Mass divided by volume equals density. How much stuff is packed into a given amount of space? So if the, something is 100 grams per cubic centimeter, that's very dense, that's very heavy, compared to just one gram per cubic centimeter, all right? Or one-tenth of a gram per cubic centimeter. So if you had a balloon full of air, it would be way less dense than a balloon full of water, right? You'd feel it, be the same size maybe, same volume, but it would be much heavier if it's full of water, much more dense. So, the study of matter, all different kinds of matter, and then the interactions between matter. So if you took sand and water and mixed them together in a beaker, what would happen? The sand, they would, they would the sand would sink. They yeah. would the water would rise. Water would rise, gets displaced a little bit. It's separate. They mix and make a new... You get wet sand, right? Yeah. And you can pour the water off and dry the sand out, and you'd still have water and you'd still have sand. Are we going to talk about if water is wet? Is all? Yes, but not right now. Um, what if you took baking soda and vinegar and mixed them together in your beaker? They would separate. They would mix. What? They would mix. Oh, they would They would mix and rise. The baking soda dissolve, and what would happen? They'd mix and rise. They'd rise. They'd bubble up, right? Yeah. You get carbon dioxide gas created. You couldn't pour off the vinegar, dry out the baking soda, and have baking soda and vinegar again like you did with sand and water, because you would have created something new: carbon dioxide gas. Right? So there's interactions between matter can be kind of boring, like sand and water, or more exciting, like baking soda and vinegar. Or like Kip was talking about when you rip open the plastic package and pull out your little tea bag looking hand warmer, uh, and the iron oxide in there reacts with the oxygen in the air and it generates heat. That's a cool react interaction between matter. How do I do the M over V? Do I just do M slash V? 
Yeah, it's like a like a division, like a fraction. All right. <clears throat> now here's where we're gonna do some drawing. <clears throat> I want you to draw a picture that illustrates what matter is. What is matter? So draw a picture. You're gonna label it matter. Uh, and in your picture, go ahead, add some labels to it. You know, draw little lines, tell me what this is, what that is. You can use color. You've got colored pencils here. Uh, you can sketch with a pen or a pencil. I don't care. Uh, the advantage to a pencil is that sometimes you can erase things, especially if you want to kind of tweak it or modify it a little bit. But draw a picture, give yourself plenty of space, and draw a picture that illustrates matter. What is matter? And keep the definition in mind. Something that has both mass and volume. I mean, it's just about everything, right? Everything is made out of matter, except for energy, forms of energy. So let's try this out. Let's see what we come up with. Take your time. Give yourself a lot of space. You're going to draw a picture that illustrates matter, with the, the hopefully will also incorporate its definition of that it has mass. You want to show that something that has mass and has volume. Draw a picture that illustrates matter. This is a stretch, all right? Especially if you feel like you're not a very good drawer. Just sketch something out. Give us an example. I did. Give it a, a label. Label it as matter. And then if you need to di add labels to your diagram, add some color. You're going to do this in your notebook. Not I did on, it. I just did it. Yeah, yeah. So eventually you'll print that out and tape it in there or glue it in. So add some color. Fix it up. So when someone looks at it, they'll be like, ah, matter, <laughs> mass and volume. <coughs> and then we're going to take some turns sharing on what we came up with. We'll use the um, document camera and put them on there. See what we got. Yeah. Show and tell. Because this way y'all can help teach each other. Because each one of you is probably going to have a different idea. And then things you see might inspire you as well. You'd be like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Are you going to share yours? Yeah. See? Excellent. Yeah, stand that way, face me, and slide up, and it should show up. And if you need to bring it into focus, push the orange dot yeah, on the side. Good. This is great. This is excellent, Zeke. And you said you didn't know how to draw very well, or didn't consider yourself a good drawer. So you made a really nice cube, and you all know how to do cubes like this, right? Where you can draw like a square, or what do we call that? A, a trap? Not a trapezoid. A, a round. A quadrilateral, right? Anyway, and then you draw another one and connect all the corners, right? Or you can draw one here and here and connect all the corners. All right, so this is great because when we were talking about volume, somebody, I think it was Isabel or Zoe or someone over here, said length, width, and height is how you measure volume. So if you were to even label this, you know, length, width, height, that could add a little bit to it and remind us about what volume is. Um, so this is excellent. It doesn't show anything about matter, I mean about mass. So you, how would you show that? Does anybody else have a picture that shows that? Thank you, Z. I think it's excellent. Uh, I have go, go. Let's see how someone else saw this. Isabel. And then, <laughs> and then and Zeke, you can keep adding to your picture. I wasn't quite finished. That's okay. Yes. Yeah, face that way. And if you need to focus it, push the little orange dot on the side. Other end. Other end. Yeah. There you go. See it? Yeah, I excellent. put it on a scale. Perfect. So look, she did a cube just like Zeke did. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys weren't even looking at each other's drawings, so that's excellent. You both were thinking the same way. Well, it doesn't matter. Because you're... Wait, no, 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 keep it there. It doesn't matter if it's better or not. What matters is if it works, right? So then here, she put it on a scale showing 100. Maybe if you added like a, a yeah. Z for grams or yeah. LB for pounds or OZ for ounces, something like that. That would help us nice. get that this is a scale. Because otherwise, it might be, oh, it looks like it's on a platter and it costs $100. Yeah. But this is good because it shows, it shows volume and it shows mass in one picture, just like that. So we now know this block of maybe ice or glass or whatever it is, is a piece of matter. Excellent. Hey, 
Anybody else? Holland, go ahead and share Yes, Holland. Yes, Holland. Right now that makes much sense. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because we can modify it so that it does make more sense. Right? <laughs> I think I'm never going to be able to understand That's okay. So what we're trying to do here is just communicate this idea in more than just words. All right. <laughs> Uh, when you're facing me, it should be uh, face up to you. <laughs> Perfect. All right. It looks like Mr. Potato Head with a cowboy hat and spurs. Is it a potato? No, it's just a word weird. <laughs> just some strange. Uh, it could be a chicken that got all its feathers plucked out. Um, it's a little disturbing. All right, so. All yes, it does. I, by looking at it, we can assume that it takes up space, meaning it has volume, and it weighs something. Yeah. But what could Holland add to his picture that would it help? That would help add that to the definition. Okay, obviously, you can make yeah. It more 3D. More 3D. Because if it's just flat, like I mean, things that are flatter still technically have like yeah, that's right. length. But I mean, if it's just Right, so giving that sense of volume, that three-dimensional part. And then in terms of mass, maybe you could have it squishing something. Cool. Or it could be on one of, you know the scales? It could be squishing the human race. What's, who's the lady, uh, Lady Justice, right? Who's got the scales of justice. Uh -huh. One of those sort of balance scales. He could be balancing himself with something else. Something. Maybe an anvil, I don't know. Yep. So anything that could convey more information. Okay. That you could add to your picture. Anybody else want to share? Someone who who has it yet? I have one. Okay, I'll let's see what you got. I think it's cool that way. We had, the first two people had a cube. Okay, I so, have a cube. Yeah. Okay, I have a few. I have three. Let's see. All right, everybody, let's focus. One. So you can show that there's mass because this guy is pushing the cube. Excellent. But it's not easy because it's a big cube. So this is cool. Um, I think yours and Isabel's both, you did this sort of shading yeah, on your cube to make it look like it was it solid. Big. Yeah. And not just like a, a frame, like an outline. So that's, that's a cool effect. I also have... Wait, wait, wait. And then this person <laughs> pushing on it kind of gives it a sense of scale, too, of how big it is. Yeah. That's a big block. It's not an ice cube. That's a, a block of ice. Maybe it's like, just a really small person. Okay, and, and like you said, pushing on it represents the fact that it's heavy. It's got mass. It's massive. That's excellent. What's the other one? So I showed that it's not like it actually has mass because you can see right here, it actually has like some three dimensional. Oh, yeah. And um, he's looking his elbow. Which is <laughs> not an easy thing to do. Yeah. And then this is another one. So these are, are good sketches, but they don't carry as much information but as that really simple what? one of the stick okay, figure I'm and the cube. Yeah. So those are fun. Yeah. And, and by fun. adding a little more to it, I think you can convey more of that idea of mass and volume. I'll work Excellent. Back. Anybody else? Even if it's just a very rough sketch that you're very embarrassed of, but are still willing to share. If I gave it a shadow. Nobody? Like, Anybody use some color? Anybody use color? Celeste, can we see yours? Would that be okay? Thank you. This color can also add a whole lot more. Just like with the shading that they did on their cubes to make it look more solid. I did like a sand and water. Excellent. So here, like we were talking about, here's a cup. She labeled it cup. That's good. Water. Sand. She made the water blue. The sand was black. And it's sitting on an electronic balance. Showing that it weighs 50. That's excellent. So this cute, the, the glass, the cup, is three-dimensional. So it gives you that sense of you could actually measure like how many milliliters or how many cups or ounces or whatever was in it. So that gives you your sense of volume. And then here's the mass. And it's two different things, sand and water. And it shows how the sand sinks to the bottom, which is something you mentioned earlier. That's excellent. There's a lot of information in that. It's a really simple picture. Yes, and you were one of the people who raised your hand saying, I, I'm not a good drawer. All right, you don't have to be a good drawer. You just have to be able to convey this information. All right, anybody else? No? Everyone should have to share. I'm finished. All right, so I've done it. Jonas is going to share. Let's see what Jonas says. Wait, so how, how does it go? 
like just face me and the <clears throat> right side up for you will be right side up for all of us. So this is mine. Oh, excellent. He labeled this cube height, length, width, because height times length times width equals volume, right? For something like a, I don't know what you'd call it, a three-dimensional box or something. And he labeled the fact that it's full of water. Okay. Oh, no, matter. I'm sorry. Matter. So it doesn't tell us anything about the mass of it, although the fact that it's shaded makes it look more solid. So there's something there. So even if you had, had it squishing something or sitting on a scale or in one of those sort of balance scales, that would convey a little more information, that, that concept of mass. That's good. Cool. Anybody else? Tell me if I've... You, you've modified yours? It is. You've added a little more to the picture to help us out? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Let's see this, and then we're going to move on um, to two other definitions with pictures. It is now 3D and on the scale. Oh, so you took my idea of the scale. Yeah. And, it's, and kind, then, it's kind of 3D. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a little bit of perspective in there. Yep. Especially for the thing he's standing on. And then this looks like some sort of pyramid. What is that? A That's plate? That's another scale. That's just oh, there's nothing this. on it. Oh, yeah. I see. And then it's, he's showing that he yeah. weighs more than this yeah. empty part. I get it. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So matter is anything that takes up space and has weight yeah. or mass and volume. All right, two new words we're going to add um, for some definitions. And then for each one, give yourself lots of room. If you need to turn the page or go to the next page over. Atom and molecule. So these are two forms of matter. Another one that we probably don't have time yet for today would be element. So when we talk about matter, stuff that has mass and volume, there's atoms, there's molecules, like the air elements. Like the avatar. Well, all right. So an atom is a single unit of matter. So write this, and then and give yourself lots of space. So a single unit of matter, and molecule is. Y'all know what a molecule is? Nobody? It's a combination of two or more atoms. <clears throat> so write down that word with its definition and then do a picture to illustrate it. <coughs> you can use color, you can um, try to make it three-dimensional if you want, you can think of ways that you've seen atoms or molecules represented or based on what you know. So if a molecule is a combination of two or more atoms and an atom is a single unit of matter, no. an atom is kind of like the smallest piece of matter. Like if you were to cut something smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller you'd kind of get to the point where if you could divide it anymore, it wouldn't be the same. You would have changed it significantly. It would make a nuclear bomb. Exactly. There you go. Fission. And, and look at each other's pictures. Um, it's not stealing or cheating to copy each other's uh, ideas or notes in this in this practice because we all can teach each other which is why I wanted you all to share what you did so again atom molecule we have a definition how can you draw that you can base this on what you did last year which you sort of know in general <laughs> about an atom being a single unit of matter. So it's, it doesn't have 
doesn't have to be like an actual add-on. Can it be part of our matter sketch? No, it doesn't. I mean, can it be part of your what? Matter sketch and make like a diagram. Uh, I'd rather it be a separate one. So okay. even if you turn the page or move down to another section on your page or... Can I draw a cube with atoms? But we don't want a single atom. Or yeah, you could draw a cube with atoms and then just make sure you focus on just one single piece. Yeah, whatever, whatever comes to mind for you. Whatever makes sense to you. And then we'll kind of take a look at them and, and take them apart modify them, add stuff. And then later, as we get deeper into the unit, we'll redo some of these drawings with the new information and new understandings that we have. And the notebooks will also help me because it gives me sort of a glimpse into what's going on in your head. So it's another form of assessment. And then these are also tools for you to use later, like when you're reviewing. And then whenever someone's ready to share, you can bring it up and show us what you got. And see how it compares to what other people did. All right, Jonas. And you can zoom in by turning that little crank on the left there. That's zooming out, zooming in. <clears throat> so that's kind of a classic, isn't it? The picture of the atom. Did y'all ever watch Jimmy Neutron? Mm -hmm. Boy Genius or whatever? It's got the little <laughs> symbol. Is, is that the tag for it? It's got the little uh, symbol of the, like, the ball with the things zinging all around it, like your nuclear radiation symbol. Excellent. And then molecule down here, it kind of looks like a little blob with, a big blob with little blobs attached to it. So those would be atoms, right? And shows that there's, atoms could be different sizes, but they stick together. Right? So you could maybe even add a little label to it, Jonas, that says atom, and then an arrow there, atom. You could even maybe say what kind of atom it is, or what kind of molecule this might be. But this is good color might be helpful too. Like your blobs could be different colors. The little ones could be yellow. The big ones could be purple. Something like that that just shows uh, or highlights differences or similarities. Thank you, Jonas. Anybody else? I have one. So you could add some add some more information to your, your drawing just to keep refining it. Anyone else want to share? We only have a few minutes left. And I still need to give you your homework. I'll really try this one. Okay. So, so this is a human, and this part of his head is one atom. Now he's a very small human, so just this part of his head is just tiny enough to be just one atom. One piece. One piece of the big thing, and I'm showing that it's a part of tiny piece of matter, and it's matter because he's on a scale and to show that he has volume and density and he weighs 400 pounds so he's so maybe you could even have turned this top part into sort of more of a cube divided up into those different colored little blocks to show that it was like one piece and has that three-dimensional part okay all right did yes. you get one for molecule as well or is this also the molecule when you look at all of them combined um no his head is one molecule and then each body part is a different yeah, so maybe you could add like one of those little carrot things that says the whole thing is molecule. All right, so that was a little anthropomorphic, you know, giving some human characteristics to non-human things, but that's fine. I mean, because it's the idea of it that we're trying to get across. Anyone else? Very quickly in the last minute here we have one more person. Want to share any sketches they did? Brian, feeling bold? Excellent, thank you. Let's see what we got. And then I'm going to pass out your homework and we'll be done. Oh, cool. So again, this atom drawing is very much like what Jonas did with this main nucleus and then these things zinging around it like planets orbiting around the sun. Beautiful. That's like a classic picture of an atom, right? Everybody recognizes that. And then this one is cool because you showed all these red like spheres joined together with these sort of stick things. 
which is your classic model of an atom, right? You guys have seen things like this. So that represents a molecule, all these combinations of individual atoms. Excellent. And I like the way you use the color, too. It makes it sort of stand out, the differences. And that shows that those are all the same. Excellent. All right, we're going to have to stop there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the homework, it's a very basic reading. A lot of it's sort of review. It's about uh, chemical and physical changes in matter. And then at the very end, it talks a little bit about phase change. Like when things melt or freeze or boil. Oh, and what I want you to do with your notebooks is put them in this pink bin over here that's labeled second for second period. You're not going to take them with you. You're just. Do not. Uh, yeah, mostly just read it. And then we're going to be going over it over the next couple This is due Wednesday. It is Wednesday. January 10th. So one week from today. This is a short week. Uh, so January 10th, next Wednesday, this is the reading that we do. Put your notebooks, put your notebooks in the bin, labeled second. Uh, the notebooks in general are not going to leave the room.